Today, I, I want to take this opportunity to talk about racism and equality. Uh, we know about the inequalities in our country, and we're working every day in the city of Boston to eliminate them. Our resi resiliency policy defines racial inequality as a slow-moving disaster that harms communities and individuals over the course of a lifetime. From the moment the COVID crisis hit, we saw, we saw very stark pictures of what that looks like in financial vulnerability, housing insecurity. As I've reported here many times, in access to food and technology, and certainly in health impacts. We saw the urgency it would take to meet those deep needs in our communities. And we have acted with that urgency. Equity has been the center of our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And our goal has always been to recover from this pandemic in a more equitable state than we entered it. Then on May 25th, George Floyd, who no one knew, at least in Boston, was murdered in Minneapolis. And then the public conversation changed. Lifetimes of experiences were brought up to the surface in justified anger. Young people refused and still refuse to accept that injustice of the past, and that would not be their reality. A movement grew that has brought a new urgency to this moment in our nation's history, not just our city, but our nation. I stood at this podium a little over a week ago and I said I was going to listen, and I've been listening to that movement. I've been listening to black Americans and people of color in my life on my team here in the city. We've been in dialogues about their experiences, real experiences, how racism shapes lives and hurts communities as we're seeing right now. And we're determined to accelerate our work towards systemic change to renew our nation and our city's promise of equal opportunity and justice for every single person. Out of that conversation has come an initial set of actions for racial equity that I'm going to announce today. What I'm announcing today is the beginning, it's not the end. There will be more announcements and more work that we have to do. But first, I want to declare racism to be a public health crisis in the city of Boston. The health impacts of historic and systemic racism are clear in our COVID-19 case numbers. And the impacts go far beyond the current crisis. So we'll be back backing this declaration with an initial investment of $3 million that's going to be transferred from the police overtime budget to the Boston Public Health Commission. The Health Commission will work with our city's departments, including our police department, on strategies to direct access and the impacts of racism has on the lives and the health of Boston residents. I'd like to invite Chief Marty Martinez now to come up and talk a little more about what we're doing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Racism is a driving force that shapes access to the social determinants of health, like housing, education, and employment. And it's a barrier to health equity for all Bostonians. In a city like ours, we have to focus on the impact that racism has on the lives of all of our neighbors and how it impacts the overall health of the city. The executive order that the mayor will launch and the declaration that racism is a public health crisis is an important step in ensuring intentional focus on this work and resources that will allow us to do what's necessary. But more than just the executive order, it comes with actions. We will work on an eight-step strategy to approach this work led by the Boston Public Health uh, Commission in partnership with Health and Human Services. Actions that include the creation of policy and practice solutions that work to dismantle systemic racism 
and create barriers to strong public health. That will include an assessment of health equity in all of our policies to identify where there are gaps and where we can create real measures of success. We will create a Boston Health Equity Now plan that will detail objectives and measurable goals that will get to the root causes of these inequities, not simply just respond to them. We will continue our engagement of historically underserved communities to be at the table for decision making and ensure we're moving in the right direction. We will, complete, we will have complete and regular availability of, of specific race and ethnicity data that documents the health ex inequities that exist so that we can ensure we're collecting, disseminating, and looking at the gaps that exist in partnership with our hospitals and our health care centers. And then we will use that data to analyze the real facts, to analyze the gaps, and do the work necessary to close those inequities. We will continue our focus on access to prevention and treatment that's culturally and linguistically linguistically competent. We will develop direct service programs and services that address the negative impact of these inequities, and we will join advocacy at the state and national level for these policies. It's important to not only make the declaration and important to not only have this executive order, but it's important that we have an intentional focus on what causes these inequities and these disparities. And at the root, it is racism. As the mayor said, we've seen it play out through our COVID-19 uh, COVID and through the work we've had to do, and we continue to see it play out today. It's been at the core of the Boston Public Health Commission's work, and it will continue to be at a core with a stronger intentionality, more resources, and the full weight of the mayor behind this work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your leadership on this, and we will continue to move this work forward. Thank you, Marty. In addition to uh, the declaration, we're also taking a number of steps in law enforcement accountability. We're going to establish a process to strengthen the current existing community oversight panel uh, that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. These steps call for a 10-point action plan put forward by the Black and Latino Legislative Caucus and other elected officials of color in Boston and the Commonwealth. I want to thank all the elected officials for their advocacy, in particular members of the Boston City Council. And I will join them in advocating for change. In addition, the Boston Police Department has completed a review of its use of force policies outlined by the national Eight Can't Wait movement. The Boston Police Department is clarifying rules to meet the standards and has immediately implemented several reforms that we hadn't previously implemented. These are all use of force policies proven to reduce the likelihood of violence. I want to commend and thank the Commissioner, Commissioner Gross, for his leadership in acting swiftly to drive these important changes forward. I also want to thank the members of the command staff of the police department for taking these issues very seriously. The Boston Police Department is also adopting the training program known as Ethical Policing in Courage. Courageous, excuse me, is courageous, epic. This means that officers will not only be required to intervene when they witness unnecessary use of force, They'll be trained with strategies to preventing abuses and intervening if they occur. I can also announce that moving forward, the Boston Police Department will no longer use the hair test for evidence of drug use in officers or recruits. I want to thank the police unions in their partnership in this decision that we're able to eliminate the hair test here in the city of Boston. I can also announce steps that we're taking for the fiscal 2021 budget to further ground public safety and community well health and well-being. I am proposing to the Boston City Council to reallocate 20% or $12 million of the Boston Police Department's overtime budget. The money will be invested instead in community program for youth, for homelessness, for people struggling with the effects of inequality. That includes $3 million to implement our public health declaration. $1 million to support trauma response and counseling at the Boston Public Health Commission. $2 million for community investments through other city departments, including violence prevention, language access, food security, immigrant advancement, elder support, and the Human Rights Commission. $2 million for programming supporting minority and women-owned businesses. $2 million for housing security and ending youth homelessness and $2 million for emergency clinicians and mental health supports to provide through the Boston Police Department when they respond to crisis. Taken together, this is a significant program of reforms and investments. 
And I've said a new policy and budget announcements are important, but they're certainly not enough. We need to keep the community involved, sustain this conversation, and continue to make and demand change. So I'm also announcing a process for community input, review, and reform. I have signed the Mayor's Pledge issued by the Obama Foundation My Brother's Keeper Alliance. The My Brother's Keeper was launched in 2014 to empower young men and women of color, and Boston was one of the initial cities. We were there at the founding, and we made sure that we continue to be part of this alliance. What this pledge says is, one, we will review all of our police use of force policies. Two, we will engage communities by including a diverse range of input, experiences, and stories. Three, we'll report the findings of our review to the community and, and seek feedback. Four, we will reform all of our use of force policies based on the conversations that are happening. I want to be clear that our process is not designated to delay change. It's designed to sustain change. And to make sure our commitment translates into action, I'm creating a new task force. It will be led by Boston's Bostonians from civil rights organizations, the legal community, and the faith community. It will be chaired by Wayne Budd, the former U.S. Attorney for the District of Massachusetts. He's a respected and longtime leader in Boston's legal community and certainly civil rights community. The task force will conduct an immediate review of force Force policies, all police force policies and other equity issues at the Boston Police Department. And it will provide guidance on how we strengthen the co-op board to ensure that their work is effective. And I will be accepting any changes that they recommend to the co-op board. This task force will begin immediately and produce a recommendation within 60 days. The community will then have time to review the recommendations and provide feedback and we will announce reforms. We're not going to let this moment or this movement pass us by. I pledge to make Boston a national leader in this work, and we are falling through on our pledge. At this point, I'd like to ask former U.S. Attorney Wayne Butt to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for, on, on behalf of the task force, we thank you for the opportunity to serve. We understand the importance of the tasks that you have given us, and we understand that these, these are to be undertaken promptly and efficiently. And you can be assured, Mr. Mayor, that it will be given our very, very best effort. So again, thank you for this opportunity to serve you and the city of Boston. Thank you, sir. It's this kind of leadership that takes our whole city working together. This has to be a truly collective effort across government and community. So I have to, I'm calling on all of us, every Bostonian, every elected official, to be part of the solution. At the same time, we must continue to listen to the voices at the center of the conversation. As a white elected official, I depend on the guidance and leadership people of color and leaders of color and residents of color. I want to thank all of them for their leadership and their partnership, from the state legislators to the members of my cabinet to the members of my team here at City Hall, friends and former colleagues who have been reaching out to me every single day over the last two weeks, and to the Boston Police Officers of Color who are respected and beloved members of our community. I just also want to recognize the members of the Boston Police Department. They are truly committed, our officers. They're committed to community policing and positive reform since my first day as mayor of this great city. Our officers continue to build strong foundations of trust in relationships with young people and members of all of our different neighborhoods here in the city. Their work starts with a positive interaction with our communities in our classrooms and our schools, and in progress in programs like Coffee with a Cop, the Flashlight Walks, the Peace Walks, at Christmas time, Shop with a Cop. They provide prevention and diversion supports for at-risk youth and families. They offer pathways 
for people and our young people in particular away from the violence. They're essential partners in some of our most effective life-changing programs that we have here in the city. As a result of our Boston Police men and women's work from 2013 to 2019, complaints of improper behavior fell by 40 percent. Complaints of excessive use of force dropped by over 50 percent. Over that same time frame, the crime rate, rate in Boston went down by nearly 30 percent. Our arrests in our city are down by 33 percent. Officers have taken over 5,000 guns off the streets of Boston. They've made this progress over the last six years by lifting people up, not locking people up. That's what we're going to keep doing here in Boston. The men and women of the Boston Police Department are increasingly reflective of our communities that they serve. And let's not forget, these officers are sons and daughters of proud parents. They are mothers and fathers who love their children. They're coaches and mentors in our community, and they too are feeling the same emotion of this moment, and they too want to be part of the solution. They continue to deserve our respect and gratitude. We all know we still have work to do. That's very, very clear. But we have the right police department to partner with the community to do that work here in Boston. I also want to remind all of us that systemic change must go far beyond law enforcement. We began this year by launching bold plans to call for record investments in school equity and housing equity in particular. We cannot be certain what will happen with the state budget, but on the city side, we will follow through on those funding commitments, including supports for struggling schools to close the racial opportunity gaps and the first city-funded rental voucher program in the history to provide struggling families with stability and security. And as we continue to face this pandemic, we will continue to be guided by our community and our COVID-19 Health Inequities Task Force.